So it's almost every time that I forget the formula for omega. So it's, it's, it should be root k over n, I think. So you've already gotten the value of k to be 20. So omega is root k over n, 20 over 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.1. So we say square root of 20 over 0 0.3 multiply by 0 0.1 so that gives us 0 0.82 0 0.82 so I think we have solved this 0 0.82 so next one dimension of energy Dimension of energy is dimension of work. I think we have solved. Okay, I don't think we solved for dimension of work. Um, where is it taking? Okay? Dimension of energy, dimension of work. So kilogram meter per second square is force. Then multiply by displacement. So that's going to be kilogram meter square per second square that will be m l square t minus 2 so m l square t minus 2 so it's divided by t square so it's still correct unit of power unit of power is watts and we have done this before we have derived the si unit of power before then this one is dimension of power we have done it quality of viscosity we have done it what happens to surface tension when the temperature increases surface tension is going to decrease the surface tension is going to decrease so that's that's correct a stone falling through water a stone falling through water is explained by it's not a stone is explained by it is the motion of a stone is explained by stokes law so that's what this does the motion of the stone that falls through water is explained by stokes law not that the stone is explained by so this is a rough surface. They say you should calculate the maximum friction that will support a two kilogram mass not to slip down. So the angle is 30, the mass is two. The angle is 30, the mass is two. So if the angle is 30 and the mass is two kilogram, so the force trying to bring it down is mg sine theta. So that will be 20 sine 30 so 20 is mg that's the mass times g equal to the frictional force so that will be 10 so the answer is 10 newton so the next one a boy applied 15 newton force do not on a car moving due east if the car covers five meters along its own direction now i think this is the correct form of the previous question that was asked or this is an alternate form of the question so it, it, it applies the force of 15 newton to the north direction and the car covers five meters in its own direction that means in eastern direction so that means this is the direction of the force this is the direction of motion of the car so they, they, they are moving the car is not moving in the direction of the force so the work done is zero so a stone tight at the end of four meter long track is wire and making 12 oscillation within one second the speed of the stone in the circle so if you look at all the options everything is meter per second so what they're asking for is the tangential speed so the tangential speed v is equal to omega r so v is we don't have omega omega is 2 pi f r so omega is 2 pi f so they give us the frequency yes they said it completes what 12 circles in a second so the frequency is 12 so this will be 2 pi multiplied by 12 multiplied by 4 because I think the radius is four meters so let's do that two pi multiplied by 12 multiplied by four so that gives um, 96 pi so 96 pi that's going to be three around 1.59 so that's also correct so the next one a mango fruit drops from a branch 10 meters above the ground the velocity when it is just about to hit the ground so this is very similar to the question that they asked us to find the time they also give us the height as 10 so it's the same variant of question they are just asking for different things 
so the initial velocity is zero uh, the, ve the final velocity what's going to be the final velocity so we use v square is u square plus 2gh so this is zero so v will be what square root of 2 times 10 times 10 so that will be square root of 200. Square root of 200 is 10 root 2. Root 2 is 1.4. So this will be 14.14. So that's 10 root 2 or 14.14. So the correct formula for Stokes law is 6 pi r quadrature of viscosity times v. That's correct. So a force of 15 newtons applied in a velocity of 2 kg, 2 kg over a distance of 2 meter. What's the work done? So if the body, we are going to assume that the body is moving in the direction of the force. So the force is what 50 newton right over a distance of two meters so you just do 50 times 2 that's 100 so what is laminar flow laminar flow is steady flow so which of the following is not a unit of impulse impulse is kilogram meters per second which is also newton second but newton per meter is for uh newton per meter force per unit length that's of extension so this is is very obvious that this is not correct so for this we have to find T1 and T2. So I would like to reproduce the diagram and solve this question using calculator. So we have something like this. So we have T1 and we have T2. So what's the angle? The angle is 60 degrees. The angle it makes with the vertical and the force in this row i'm not sure i can't see this clearly i think it is 100 newton so i assume it is 100 so i'm going to use calculator to solve this so what am i going to do so i have to put all the angles that are missing so you have to put all the missing angles so if this angle is 60 you know if you draw a vertical line this angle will also be 60 right so this angle is what 90 this angle is 30 and this angle is 90 so this angle is 90 so if i want to do it i will do it directly but because i want to explain that's why it's taking this long so for this t2 the angle is zero because it's pointing this way and this is pointing this way so for t2 the angle is zero for t1 the angle is what all of this angle from the origin this way we used to do resultant of forces so the angle is 270 then for this 100 newton why did i put degree this 100 newton for this 100 newton the angle is what from the origin all of this angle that's 90 plus 60 that's 150 degrees so when i want to do this on my calculator this is what i'm going to do now my calculator is already in complex mode sorry i'm not going to use complex mode this time and i will use simultaneous equation so pick five I'm looking, I have two unknowns, T1 and T2, so pick two, no, pick one, X and Y. Now what I'm going to do is that for the first row, I will enter the value of, I will do the sine of all of them. Then for the second row, I'm going to do the cosines of all of the angles. Now if I have the value, I will do for the unknowns first, then I will do for the known. So the first one is what, T2 and the angle is zero. So I will I can do it anyhow. I can fill the first row with sine, fill the second row with cosine, or fill the first row with cosine, fill the second row with sine. So let's do sine for the first row. So for the first one, that's sine zero, the angle zero. I don't know the value. So I'll just leave it like that. Press equal to the second one is 270, right? So I will say sine 270. I don't know the value of the force, right? So I will only enter the sine of the angle equal to. So it puts the value. Now, when I want to enter for C, which is the third force, I will four four put minus. Then I will open bracket. I will now say the value is hundred. I know the value hundred sine one fifty. Close the two brackets. Equal to. So I'm done with the first row. I did sine. Now the second row I will do cos. So I will do cos zero for the first one. The second one is what cos two seventy. Equal to. Then the third one is what? I'll first say minus. I'll now open bracket. I'll now say 100 cos uh, 150. Close bracket. So I'm done. So it's giving value for T1. T1 is what? 86. Sorry. The first one is T2. No, I the, the way the, this arrangement follows. So T2 is what? 
86.6 newton let me check that again okay equal to it, give me t1 t1 is 50 newton t1 is 50 newton so let's check so they got it right so their own arrangement is t1 and t2 so 50 and 86.6 so you don't need to disturb yourself just use your calculator to solve it if i like i could have entered the uh, cosines first you know the way i did it was sign before cosine i can do cosine before sign i'll still have the same answer so i will say cos zero for the first one then cos 270 for the second one then we now say minus cos sorry i have the value right so minus i will now open bracket 100 cos 150 equal to so the next line will be sine sine 0 sine 270 equal to the last one will now be minus open bracket of 100 sine 150 equal to so it is still the same as 86.6 and 50 so those are the values so i think oh so that's not the end i think there's there are still two more questions so this is to find the strain the strain is going to be this value l sine theta divided by l cos theta that's going to be the strain because if you have a body that deforms this way the strain is you have to make it the previous way it is so this is the 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 displacement of the top and this is the original length right so this train which is gamma is just this divided by this so in this diagram they already gave us so this is l sine theta and l cos theta so here they put l sine theta here they put l cos theta you just divide them and that will be what um sine theta over cos theta that will be tan theta so this is also correct so the mass is two the spring constant is five find the extension the mass is 2, the spring constant is 5, find the extension. The mass is 2 kg, the spring constant is 5. Now, I think it's Newton per millimeter instead of Newton per meter. So, how are you going to get the extension? So, we use what? F equal to Ke, since it is a mass, it will be Mg equal to Ke, sorry, this is Ke. So the extension will be what mg divided by k. Now the answer is in millimeters, so don't need to convert this. So this will just be what m, which is what two multiplied by ten divided by five. So that's four. So that will be four millimeters. So they got three point nine two millimeters. So I don't think that is correct. I don't think that's correct. So the correct thing to do is to use it directly unless they use g they use g as another value maybe they used g as 9.8 let's try let's try and use 9.8 mode one so we are going to have what two fraction two times 9.8 divided by five 3.92 so it's correct so that's what it did instead of so you use the value of g that you are given in the question so you have to be very careful if the question says g is 10 use 10 if the question says g is 9.8 use 9.8 so i think that should be all